Welcome to the 76th reading of my memoir, The Innocence of Guilt. I am found. After the move to Edmonton, it was quite an adjustment expecting Brian home for supper every night, but one I happily embraced. When we first viewed the house, the realtor drove us past a nearby Baptist church and I casually said to Brian, look, a church right on the corner. He replied, so what? We won't be going there. Karen entered grade one at Lansdowne Elementary School, a short walk from our house, and made friends with a little girl in her class. Her mother invited Karen to go to Sunday school at her Baptist church, not the church on the corner, but a different one further afield and I happily let her go. I wanted both my children to have exposure to religion so they would be able to make up their own minds about God. The little girl's mother, Tracy, invited me to a ladies' Bible study in her home. I accepted as I was open to learning spiritual things. Brian and I still went to inner peace movement meetings. We were put in contact with a coordinator and one of the aspects of the movement was the usage of Bible scripture as an element of inspiration. These verses comforted me to some degree, but I never thought of seriously pursuing them in any structured fashion. Writings of other faiths were also allowed and they kept my mind open if a Buddhist monk had approached me, I'm sure I would have agreed to study the teachings of his religion. But I remembered the poster on Sasha's wall and its comforting effect on me. Seated around the table with four other women in Tracy's kitchen, we took turns reading verses from 1 John in the New Testament. I'd managed to locate my dusty King James Bible, which I hadn't read or looked at for 11 or more years, stored away in a packing box in the basement. But Tracy handed out to each one of us the good news for modern man version to read from. As she said, it made the Bible easier to understand. Something incredible happened to me that evening. A presence enveloped me as I sat at the table. The scripture that claimed I belong to God and God was love reached my ears and it all came back to me. The occasion when Jesus revealed himself to me in the white light in St Albright's nursing home 15 years ago when I was a young girl. The words on the page floated up the way the hymn book words did when I was with the youth group that day. They held me in a trance by the beauty and depth of their meaning. God had found me again. In typical fashion, I kept this to myself, but walked home on feet so light, they barely touched the ground. To the night sky and the stars spread all over it, I said out loud, how could I have forgotten you, Jesus, for all these years? Silently inside my heart, I seemed to hear his reply. None of that matters now, for I have you back. I entered the house to find Brian relaxing on the sofa in the family room. He stood up as I approached and I couldn't wait to tell him. I've come back to the Lord, I announced, a huge grin on my face. What did you say? He said in bewilderment, although he understood perfectly what I meant. He knew I'd been to a Bible study but I played it down by saying it was merely something interesting to do. I repeated my announcement. His face displayed a look of horror. Why on earth would you want to go back to that old fashioned thinking? It's not old fashioned, it's the truth, and I believe it. Brian took two backward steps and flopped onto the sofa as if he'd been shot well, that's our marriage over then, if that's what you insist on doing, he uttered. I didn't know what to say. It seemed a trifle hasty to throw our marriage away, 
especially considering how far we've travelled recently to enable us to stay together. Over the next few days, he explained his ambivalence towards Christianity. Ludicrous to believe a god would put his son up on a cross and allow him to suffer in such a horrible fashion. He didn't understand the blood sacrifice, barbaric and gross, and he wanted nothing to do with it. He'd foolishly believed it once, but not anymore. He didn't leave me, though, and I refused to discard what I'd lost for so many years. I continued going to Tracy's Bible studies and was amazed to learn that she'd also wandered away from her faith for the same duration as me. She became a good friend and still took Karen along to her church with her own daughter. I wasn't ready to go myself, but she didn't pressure me to. The Inner Peace Movement meetings lost their interest for me. In fact, you could say they disturbed me. One sweet lady in our group who loved to reach out to help people had been severely reprimanded for letting others take advantage of her generosity. I understood the leaders were trying to teach us to be strong, but I thought their attitudes far too uncaring. Brian became quite heavily involved and was approached to head up the district meetings. This would involve travelling, so he wisely turned the position down, much to my relief. I decided to quietly pray at the meetings instead of entering into the exercises. I became convinced the very act of my prayers led him on to a different path, releasing me from something I had no interest in anymore. He abandoned the movement to pursue Eastern meditation. I know he searched diligently everywhere but in the direction I took. By Easter of 1976, I decided to take the plunge and visit the Baptist church near our house. Tracy planned to move away, and so it was time for me to take care of my spiritual needs with a larger group of believers. I took Karen with me the first time and boldly marched right down to the front of the church and sat in the front pew, not realising then its designation for the pastors and deacons. I was so pleased to be there. And people came up to us afterwards and introduced themselves. Such a friendly church. That summer, Mum flew over for a visit. We took her on a pleasurable trip to Jasper and Banff in a large rented station wagon. In Jasper, she experienced a thrilling but rather scary encounter with a large black bear that circled our cabin all night long. A tale to tell her church friends back home who unfortunately didn't believe her. I enjoyed my time with mom and easily shared my faith. Strange because I usually kept secrets from her. Brian wanted nothing to do with the conversation surrounding insights I gained from scripture readings, so she gravitated towards me rather than hanging on to his every word as she'd done so often in the past. A perfect holiday. Gary turned three in June, so I enrolled him in the church's nursery school for September, operated by his Sunday school teacher. The senior pastor sometimes came over to casually chat with Brian while he watered the front lawn. Brian would invite him indoors for a coffee and seemed not to mind the interaction. I don't know why he bothers, as I'm not at all interested in Christianity, he said, but he was much too polite to tell the pastor this. I have no idea what his part in the conversation was, but he used to chuckle after the pastor left. Oh well, I've given him something challenging to consider this time. The pastor advised me not to preach at him with Bible verses, but to offer him to God in my prayers each morning, which I did without fail. Sometimes Brian annoyed me by mocking the children who eagerly rose on Sunday mornings to go to church. Perhaps he thought it wouldn't last. 
when they came home full of what they'd done in Sunday school, he'd say in a sarcastic way, what do you want to go there for? But they didn't get upset. They were having too much fun. Karen did ask her daddy if he would come with us to church. She said she missed him. After the summer, I opened up my house for a ladies' Bible study. Brian didn't try to stop me, but he did use the opportunity, if he happened to be home, to slip in a few snide remarks aimed to embarrass the ladies. They were all praying for him, of course, along with all the members of the church choir I now sang in. Then one Sunday he said he'd come to church with us. He claimed that Karen had touched his heart, and how could he deny what his little daughter wanted? And anyway, he said, as an afterthought, I can worship God in a Hindu temple, a Buddhist monastery, not that he went to either, or a Baptist church. It makes no difference. He said he wasn't coming back to the Lord, so to speak, but simply pleasing Karen. I'm sure he didn't fail to notice that it pleased me too. Thank you for listening. Please feel free to subscribe, like or comment on this reading and hopefully you will tune in to the next one. Bye for now.